Hey, what it do, y'all? It's your boy E2 Blue coming back at you again. And um, we got some news late last night. Um, I was going to do a video late last night, but I was really tired and I didn't want to sound stupid on camera. So, got to stay professional at all times, right? Yes. So, last night, the uh, Cowboys reported that they actually signed George Iloka. Iloka. Um, weird sounding last name. A lot of people can't say it because... When you look at uh, uppercase I and a lowercase L, it looks the same right next to each other. So, which makes sense. You know, um, most people's last names don't, most people's names in general don't start with an I and an L together. So I understand why people mess it up a lot, but it's I loca, I loca, George I loca, Jorge I loca. Um, so anyway, um, they signed him last night to a short contract, one year prove a deal, um, basically uh, getting the veteran minimum. I don't know exactly what. The money is when it comes to what he's getting it. I don't know exactly what the figure is, but it's probably somewhere close to what Randall Cobb is getting with incentives. Makes sense. It's good on a salary cap. I know a lot of you guys look at the sign and like, I don't want this. I don't want this guy. He sucks. Oh, he's a, he's, he doesn't bust it down Tatiana like he's supposed to. But anyway, I look at this guy. He's a deaf guy and uh, a depth guy. Um, some of you guys don't think he's worth that. But again, he's a he's a veteran that's also a special teamer. That's one thing that you have to understand. These Cowboys need special team. Nobody cares about the special team unit until another team is running a, a touchdown back from a punt or a kickoff return. And then y'all sitting here like, damn, what the hell happened? And I'm like, I told you, you got to have core special teamers on your team. So you got to have guys to play the special teams position. Everybody can't be a damn starter. You can't have a stake on every plate. I reiterate this all the time, guys. Understand the reason for this. Now, the Cowboys, you know, you can say they're bargain basement shopping. Okay, whatever. But you got to fill the depth out on your team. You got to make sure that your starters are paid. They still got to pay D-Law. Still working on that. Um... You got you got to make sure your starters are good, your core guys, and then you have your core special teamers. So I think the Dallas Cowboys are doing it the right way. I'm happy with what they're doing because I understand it from a business level. It's not just about oh everybody signing this big free agent guy, um, overpaying this guy for what? No, we're not doing that. Yes, we missed out on the Earl Thomas train. He was too expensive. But you look at it like this: you get we signed three guys. For the price, for even less than the price that we could have got for one Earl Thomas. Think about that. You got Randall Cobb, you got George Aloka, um, and you got Kerry Hyder. You might even add um, Christian Covington in there. You got four guys for the price of one. So just be happy about that. Um, I'm going to tell you what he brings to the table. I'm going to tell you what my opinion is. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm going to tell you what my opinion is on, on this Iloka kid and um, things of that nature. So, first of all, before I say anything about his stats and what he is, you guys know that I say all the time that like sometimes when you go to a different team with a different scheme, different type of coaches, different atmosphere, a player tends to play a little better. Now, stats are everything. But they're not everything, if you understand what I'm saying. So stats tell you what a person has done in the past. But what it doesn't tell you is what happened when he was with this team. How much did he start? Um, how did this team play him? Um, did they pay attention to what he's good at, what he's not? I want you guys to look at the bigger picture. And this is what E2 Blue brings to the table, guys. Um you know, I'm not a film guy like like Law and Voshar. They're great at that. Shout out to those guys. Salute to my guys. I love them to death. I love what Law does. I love what Vosh does. Um, but what I'm bringing to you is more so of to, to let you understand that, like, yes, the stats matter. But also there is a factor of atmosphere that comes into effect. A lot of, a lot of people don't talk about that. And I'm here to talk about that with you guys. So when you talk about atmosphere with these players and what they do when they come to different teams, it makes a big difference. Perfect example. Look at Byron Jones. We played him in the wrong damn position his whole career with the Dallas Cowboys. His whole basically rookie contract, he played safety. That boy is not a safety. He is a cornerback. And as soon as they played him at the cornerback position last year, what happened? He did something. He made strides. He had a great season. 
Um, I don't think anybody scored a touchdown on him until until the playoffs. So look at it like this. Sometimes a new senior room makes a difference. And we know that Randall Cobb was a good guy, um, a great player, and I think he'd be even better with the Dallas Cowboys, and he might actually stay healthier because he's gonna he's coming into a warmer environment. Cowboys play mostly indoors unless we're going to a place like Green Bay or or um Chicago in the cold weather. But yeah, but so back to George Aloka as a player. Now, George Aloka, he was a starter for the Bengals for his Sorry, dog's doing somewhere. Uh, for his first six NFL seasons, he started for the Bengals. He had a decent career there. Um, they played him well in certain positions, and then they tried to switch him up. Um, he he started three games last year for the Vikings. He didn't really have a great – he didn't do much great with the Vikings. Uh, they played him wrong. I'll be honest with you. The Vikings played him wrong. Um he has 359 career tackles, 32 pass breakups, and nine interceptions playing the both safety spots. Now, that's key here. George Aloka played, he plays, he's a versatile safety. He plays both the free and the strong. Now, coming to the Dallas Cowboys, um, you already have uh Xavier, um, Xavier Woods playing the uh the free safety position, right? Um, he plays that well. I want Xavier Woods to stay at the free safety spot um, because he's going to get you interceptions there. He is a ball hawking guy. I love what Xavier Woods brings to this table. So I don't think Xavier Woods needs to be needs to feel disrespected. Um, oh, justice there. I don't think that he needs to feel like he's being disrespected or anything like that because uh, oh my god, stand this sucks. I need to get a new stand, you guys. Sorry. All right. Um. I think uh, George Iloka, um, what he brings, if I were the Dallas Cowboys, and I think that's what they're going to do because they're not stupid on defense. I think they need to put him at this strong safety position, let him play in the box, let him come down into the box on running plays and short yardage plays and hit because he can hit. He can definitely hit. George Iloka is not that guy that's going to give you interceptions per se. Now, he can intercept the ball. But if you look at the tape, it's mostly on double, triple coverage, and there's a lot of other defensive guys in the area, um, and he just happens to be at the right place at the right time. So, but again, we have Xavier Woods. We got Jeff Heath to play those positions for the um, the free side. Again, Jeff Heath can do both as well, and he has. Um, but I think what I would do with George Iloka, play him at that strong safety, um, make him, you know, play him part-time for depth purposes, put him in there, <clears throat> on heavy run teams and short yard teams and let him go down in the box and make those good tackles. And that's what he can bring to the table. And that's what I want George Aloka to do. Um, that's what he does the best. Now, when he plays the, the free safety position, when he's out in range and he's running around, he's not the greatest in, in, in pass in deep pass coverage, but he would definitely um, tackle the guy um, close to the out of bounds line and, you know, get the guy down when he gets to him. Now he can do that. But I'd rather play him at the strong safety position. That way he can play in the box, come down, come down, um, help with the linebackers and make that tackle. That That's what he's good at doing. That's what we, that's how we use Barry Church. Remember when we had Barry Church? That's how solid Barry Church was. Barry, Barry Church was real solid at that strong safety position. And that's what we played him at. And this is what George I. Local can do. Now, I wish they would go back and get Barry Church too. Barry Church was my guy. I loved Barry. Um I loved his attitude. I love I love how, you know, just his overall um mindset coming to the game. So I think that um I mean it's not too late for them to go get Barry. They can get Barry back on a cheap veteran minimum too. You get these guys on cheap contracts and that's what you do. We got a lot of one year contracts with these guys. Um renting renting to buy or renting to own or however you want to say it. Um, but I think that uh, Randall Cobb is going to be a guy that we keep longer than a year. But some of these other guys, they're just year rentals, just bridge guys until we um, draft a safety and get him um, and get him acclimated and get him up to snuff. Now, speaking of the draft, I think that um, the Cowboys are going to draft another safety as well. They're going to there's some good safeties coming out of this draft. They're going to get somebody too, and I will be talking more about that when we get to that point. Um, today we, we're going to have a good treat for you guys is we're going to be at Mark's house today. We're going to do a, how Mark says a mega live stream. So it's going to be like a round table live stream. We're just going to be in there. We're going to be talking to you guys and, um, we're going to have a good old time. So 
Um, one thing about us YouTubers, we're, we're definitely going to keep you guys informed, if not entertained as well. And that's that's our job. That's what we do. So, again, Cowboys signed George Iloka for a year. Um, we'll see what happens with it. Cowboys Nation, stay positive, okay? Um, don't, don't, don't just write it off as, oh, this guy is terrible. Why do we keep getting these terrible players? Think about it. He's 6'4". He's that tall guy that Chris Richard desires, okay? Um, and we haven't forgot about Jordan Lewis. Jordan Lewis still has his um, place on this team. But you look at you look at um, George Iloka. He's 6'4". I think that under the tutelage of Chris Richard, I think Chris Richard can actually elevate his game and make him play a little better. You know, that whole notion you can't teach old dogs new tricks, I don't always believe that because – just because a player has reached his peak doesn't mean that he can't learn a couple of different tools to help him do what he does at that level better. You understand what I'm saying? It's not going to make him more athletic, but what it would do is it will help him with his technique. Understand, technique is different than athleticism. Not every NFL player is athletic. Me personally, I was more, I, I was an athlete when I played, but I was more of a technique guy than I was an athletic guy. Now, that's why I was good. I was like that Sean Lee type of guy. I was very cerebral. I studied the game. I studied people's psyches, their tendencies, and what they did. Um, you know, when I played linebacker, you know, when I played in high school, when I played in my, that one year in arena league, I definitely read the quarterback, and I and I and I knew, and I read his eyes, and that's what's good. Jeff Heath does that very well. I think George Iloka is good at tracking where the ball is too. After looking at his tape, so. Just just be positive about it, guys. Um, again, he's not going to be a starter, but he's definitely going to be a guy that provides that depth for you. He's going to be that guy to get some tackles for you. He's going to help out with the linebackers playing in the box. If they play him at that strong safety position, that will be dynamic for him, and that will help out. And then Chris Rashard can teach him some better techniques and uh, make him even better. So with that being said, y'all, that's all I got for right now. Thanks again to all my subscribers. I appreciate all your support. Um, get me over 3,000 subscribers. Um, if you're new to the channel, you're just uh, coming through seeing your boy, um, go ahead and smack that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell for your boy to bring you this content. It's your boy E2Blue, always keeping it real. I'll talk to y'all later on in Mark's house. Y'all have a great day.